Hi, I'm Thomas White. I hold the Hilton Chair in Business Ethics and serve as Director of the Center for Ethics and Business at Loyola Marymount University in Los Angeles. More important to this video, I'm the author of the book In Defense of Dolphins, which explains the ethical implications of the scientific research on dolphins. I'm a scientific advisor to the Wild Dolphin Project, and I'm a fellow of the Ferrata Mora Center for Animal Ethics at Oxford University. In November of 2014, the American Cetacean Society hosted a panel on captivity at its 14th international conference. The panel consisted of four individuals, two who represented captive facilities, and two of us who disagree with the practice. Right before the panel began, we were informed, however, that unlike all of the other panels that would take place at the conference, ours would not be videotaped. When I asked why, I was simply told that one of the panelists had requested it. I later discovered that it was the panelists from SeaWorld and that the ACS had agreed to these conditions to make sure that all viewpoints were represented. Now we can understand the AP ACS's decision. They were in a difficult situation trying to make the best of it. However, a couple of things have to be pointed out about the SeaWorld request. First of all, in relation to what is normal at scientific and research conferences of this sort, a request like this is seriously inappropriate. Openness, transparency, free, full public debate is the norm. At conferences of the American, American Association of the Advancement of Science, for example, of which I've spoken a couple of times, everything is recorded so that anyone who is not there knows what went on. Secondly, why then did SeaWorld make the request? Now, clearly I cannot know what was in the mind of the person who initiated the request, but I would like to offer the following line of speculation for you to consider. The SeaWorld would not have had any reason to worry about the performance of its employee, since if SeaWorld operates like any other company, their employee's presentation would have been vetted before the conference. SeaWorld would also have had no reason to worry about the presentation of the other representative from a captive facility. That leaves the other two people. First, a highly respected marine scientist, but who is a known critic of the captivity industry. And secondly, me, a philosopher who teaches at a conservative business school at a conservative university who writes dull academic books and articles about the topic. Why then would SeaWorld be concerned about our talks and not want them not to be recorded? I believe the answer here lies in how SeaWorld characterizes people who disagree with them. They characterize us as radicals, not serious researchers who have professional concerns about how they run their company. And it's easier to maintain that picture of their critics if there's no evidence to the contrary. And that's why I am posting this extended version of the talk at the ACS meeting that SeaWorld asked not to be recorded. I trust it will be clear by the end of the talk that this is not driven by any kind of animal rights extremism. It is not driven by any desire to destroy SeaWorld. In fact, you'll see in the final part of my presentation that part of my criticism of the company is that they are not taking seriously enough the responsibility to make money. I believe controversial issues should be discussed openly, fully, and freely, so I leave it to the viewers to decide on the merits of these issues. Thank you.